One of the things we see and use very often in programming is the humble array. There are many things we can do with an array, most notably the ability for us to loop through an array. However, arrays have their own limitations, and of course there are many methods out there to work around said limitations, and one of them is the linked list. Linked lists are a novel and not too complex method of implementing a list which is why it is often used as a teaching tool in basic algorithms courses. Today, we're going to explore the linked list and try to better understand how it works and what we can do to implement them. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So first, let's try and understand what's wrong with an array. Well, you see, an array is a fixed structure. If you reserve 10 words of memory, then that's all the storage you have. If you want to store 20 items, you're out of luck because you've only allocated 10 spaces. Similarly, if you only wanted to store 5 items, then 5 of those spaces are wasted. So yeah, that is one of several disadvantages of using an array. Knowing that, let us move into linked lists and let's try to understand how it actually works around this problem. It's actually harder for me to explain a linked list to you in words, so instead I'm just going to paint a picture and let's see if you can understand what it means. Here we have a flat array containing several items. Of course, by visualizing it as a little table like this, we are implying that they are occupying neighboring spaces in memory. Which, you know, for the basic array implementation, that is the case. Now, here's a linked list of the same data. Notice what we've done here. We've broken up the data into individual elements, which, of course, the way we draw it means they can exist anywhere in memory. And instead of having them side by side, we just set them up so that one item tells us where the next item is. That, of course, is where the linked part of the name comes from. It is a list that is made up of multiple linked components. So yeah, basically that is a linked list. A linked list consists of nodes. Every node has a pointer which tells us where the next node is. And to make the whole thing complete, we also need to have a hit. The reason why we have a hit is so that we can actually, you know, refer to the entire list. By knowing where the head of the list is, I can just, you know, follow the arrows and keep jumping until I find the element I want. Or I get to the end of the list. In fact, we draw this here. This looks like the earth sign in an electrical diagram because it actually is that sign. What it means is this particular pointer, you know, the pointer of the last element in the list, points to a null position. And this tells us that the list has ended. So yeah, in fact, conceptually, just with that image, you should be able to tell how a linked list works. Of course, when it comes down to manipulation, it's slightly less trivial for a linked list. In an array, it's easy because everything is next to each other. So, you know, adding or removing things is just going to neighboring addresses in memory. But that's not the case for a linked list. Some more care needs to be taken when we are inserting and deleting elements. So let's take a look at three of the most common operations that are done on a linked list. First, starting with the simplest, is read or access. Basically, we just want to find an element in this list. Notice that if I wanted to look at the fourth element, I couldn't just jump to it directly. Instead, I'm going to have to start at the head and count my way towards the fourth element. So yeah, that is in fact one of the disadvantages of linked lists, but we'll go into that later. We've just looked at read, let's now look at insertion. And here's an interesting difference between an array and a linked list. When you want to insert something into an array, it's normally the most convenient to add it to the end. Because if you add it you know, anywhere in between or at the top, you're going to have to shift all the items to make way for the new item. That is not the case for a linked list. In fact, for a linked list, it is easiest to insert something at the very beginning. Here's how it's done. The first thing we need to do is to figure out the first item in the list. Luckily, the head already tells us that. All we have to do is to get our new item to point to that first item. Then, simply redirect the head to point it at the first item. Once we straighten it all out, there you go, we've just added a new item to the head of a linked list. 
So yeah, it's as simple as that. For the more general case of inserting an item anywhere in a linked list, you know, in the middle or at the end, really the thought process is the same. Traverse your list until you find yourself at the item you want to modify. All I have to do is to set up my new item such that it points to the next item. Then we take the previous item and point it to our new item. And that is how we basically insert a new item into the list. So that's insertion. Let's now talk about deletion, which really is the same thought process, just in reverse. Let's say now I've traversed my linked list and I want to delete this item. That's not hard because I just need to find out what this item is pointing to and basically take the node before it and point it to that item. That then breaks this item out of the linked list, allowing us to delete it using whatever method our programming language offers. So there you go, that's access, insertion, and deletion along a linked list. Not too difficult, but it just requires a little bit of thought. In fact, that is where we can actually wrap up this episode. But for the sake of completeness, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information, you know, for you to round out that thought. In fact, that is just one of multiple ways to implement a linked list. What features we actually put into our linked list depends on what we need. What I've just shown you can also be called a singly linked list, and it is the most basic form of a linked list there is. We can extend it to a doubly linked list, where every item not only points forward, but also backwards. Of course, this will complicate matters slightly, because once you insert or delete an item, you have to perform quite a few pointer manipulations, instead of just the two we've seen in our singly linked list. There are in fact quite a lot of things you can do to augment a linked list, and if you're interested to find out more, you can actually hop over to Wikipedia. It does have quite an extensive listing. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode on linked lists. I hope you learned something today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.